On the beautiful island of Mauritius, Sarah is having the best vacation of her life and begins dating her diving instructor Jackson, who shows her what life is like outside the business world. During her last day, they look over their pictures and Jackson asks her to stay, but Sarah can't because she has an important job in London. Since Sarah hates goodbyes, she waits for Jackson to go to the bathroom and leaves without another word, clearly feeling bad about it. When Jackson comes back out, he is completely heartbroken. A year later, Sarah is going through her daily life in London when she gets a message from a friend in Mauritius, telling her she's getting married and that she wants Sarah to be her maid of honor. Obviously Sarah accepts and sometime later, she is arriving at the island ready to have some fun. First she stops to buy liquor at an old friend's house and accidentally ends up chased by a dog. While Sarah climbs the fence, the owner immediately calls the dog back and welcomes Sarah with open arms. After filling her jeep with alcohol, he asks her if she has already visited certain someone, however Sarah pretends she doesn't know what he is talking about. Afterward, Sarah joins her friends and they go for a swim in a waterfall followed by a break in a bar. Her friend wonders if this time Sarah will stay, but Sarah insists on her London job. At that moment, Sarah notices Jackson nearby and hides her face while her friend explains Jackson has his own diving school now. In the evening, Sarah goes to a beach party and discovers Jackson is there too. Gathering some courage, she goes to him to chat, but the whole moment is tense and awkward. Jackson leaves with some flimsy excuse about having to work, but Sarah follows him and offers to walk him home. At first Jackson is hesitant, but then he agrees. Later at his house, they share some drinks and Sarah congratulates him for his school, making Jackson admit he was inspired by Sarah's ambition. As the night goes on, Sarah and Jackson find themselves sharing many sweet moments, causing Sarah to admit she has missed him. However Jackson is angry, explaining he doesn't see the point in being with her if she will just leave again. When Sarah says Jackson could come with her to London, he points out he would never be happy there. An argument ensues, only for them to end up kissing and spending the night together. The next morning, Sarah gets a call from her friend saying she is half an hour late and they can't wait any longer because the only ferry on the island that goes to the wedding site leaves soon. Not wanting to miss the wedding, Sarah rushes out and asks her old friend Freddie for a favor, since he is a pilot, he can fly her to the wedding on his own plane. Jackson joins the flight because he is also going to the wedding, but he is in a bad mood because Sarah left again without a word. Once they are up in the air, Freddie tells Sarah to sit in the co-pilot seat so they can catch up. Remembering she used to take flying classes, Freddie also takes the chance to go over a few things about the plane, like how to keep the plane steady and use the autopilot, this way she can help him when the time comes for him to leave his seat to take his medication. They also share a bit about the state of their lives, and Freddie confesses he is still grieving his dead wife, of whom he keeps a picture on the plane. Suddenly Freddy starts coughing and Sarah yells at Jackson to bring some water, but he can't find any. Realizing Freddy is having a heart attack, Sarah tries to calm him down, but Freddy passes out and falls on the yoke, causing the plane to take a nose dive and Jackson to hit his head. At that moment an oxygen tank comes flying from behind and hits the windshield and the control panel. Jackson comes and pushes Freddy off the pilot seat while Sarah grabs the yoke and desperately tries to remember what Freddy told her to get the plane to go higher and keep it steady ahead. Luckily, the plane gets stabilized right before it collides with the ocean. Then Jackson tries to help Freddy with CPR, but there is nothing that can help him now, he is just dead. He wonders if Sarah can fly the plane and she confesses she only had a couple of lessons two years ago, so she can't do much. She assesses the damage and sees that the GPS is broken, so the couple tries their phones, but they have no signal up there. Next they try the radio a few times, but they get no answer, and when they try the autopilot, it turns out it is broken too. To make matters worse, they only have half a tank of fuel left, which may not be enough to get them somewhere safe. At least the compass works, so using their watches, they try to calculate the direction they had been going before and set a timer for when they will turn the plane again. Unfortunately a huge dark storm suddenly appears in front of them, and Sarah doesn't know what to do. At that moment, someone named Samuel comes through over the radio. Sarah tells him that they are flying the plane and that Freddy died, but the signal gets lost when the plane begins getting closer to the storms. After a few seconds of static, Samuel comes back and says that the storm is too big to fly around, but before he can give them some tips, the signal is lost again. Jackson switches seats with Sarah so she can have the pilot spot, but she still doesn't know what to do and suddenly a lightning bolt hits the plane, making it shake as it crosses the darkness. Barely keeping control, Sarah decides she will try to fly above the storm, ignoring Jackson when he is afraid they are going too high. After lots of effort, Sarah manages to guide the plane in the right direction and soon they reach the clear sky, sadly the altitude also makes them feel sick. Sarah struggles to see clearly and passes out, sending the plane into another nosedive in the storm. Then the plane spirals out of control and the dark clouds don't let them see anything, but Sarah wakes up and never stops fighting with the yoke. After lots of struggling, she manages to level the plane again, only to discover the compass is also broken. Jackson remembers a school project and makes a compass with a needle and some liquid, which gives Sarah the directions she needs to steer properly in the storm. Seconds later they finally come out of the storm, but the fuel left is very low. 
Sarah remembers the reserve tank and immediately switches to it, but the second fuel tank goes up fast for just a second before it quickly starts coming down. Jackson thinks that there might be a leak in the tank, which is located on the wings of the plane, so he decides to take the risk and go out to fix it after tying his body to the plane with some rope. Sarah doesn't like the idea, but she has no choice but to stay inside and pilot while she watches with fear how Jackson climbs to the front of the plane. There he opens the engine and fuel immediately begins spraying into his face, confirming the leak. He tries applying duct tape, and because of the speed and the wind, it takes him a few tries before getting it right. As soon as the hole is patched up, the fuel gauge stabilizes too. Jackson tries to climb back into the plane but he slips and falls, leaving him dangling under the plane's wing. A terrified Sarah wants to help him, but leaving the yoke alone causes the plane to start swerving. To solve this problem, Sarah takes the seat belt and puts it around the yoke, which manages to keep the plane steady. Then she runs to Jackson and tells him to grab her hand, so he stretches his fingers only to get slammed into the side of the plane. Sarah makes an extra effort and manages to catch him, pulling him inside and discovering his arm got badly wounded during the struggle. In order to clean the wound, Sarah grabs one of the bottles of alcohol meant for the wedding, and Jackson takes a sip before they pour it on the wound, which burns rather badly. To distract him from the pain, Sarah tells him how she always thinks of their time together and uses the chance to crack his arm back into place. Then she creates a makeshift splint from a hanger and wraps his arm with it in bandages while telling him how amazing the stunt he just pulled was. Afterward, they discover the fuel gauge is at 5%, so they decide to keep flying until they find land. Sarah thinks it will be a good idea to lighten the plane so that it uses less fuel, so they start throwing random things out, scaring a few people with a sudden object rain. The idea works and helps the fuel gauge stay steady. At that moment Jackson asks a difficult question, and Sarah she knows he means that they should get rid of Freddy's body too. It makes her feel terrible, but Jackson reminds her their survival is more important. Heartbroken, Sarah puts the wife's picture in Freddy's body and pushes him off the plane, taking a moment to grieve his death. Next Sarah wants to get rid of the alcohol, but Jackson points out it can be used as fuel because it contains ethanol. Sarah thinks it is a good idea and decides she will be the one taking the risk this time, especially since Jackson is hurt. She slowly and carefully climbs on top of the plane and holds onto the wing, where she opens the fuel tank's valve. Jackson passes the bottle to her, but the wind is too strong and the bottle flies out of her hands. Jackson quickly tries again and this time it works, one by one Sarah pours three bottles into the valve. When Jackson is about to hand her the last one, he accidentally drops it on the plane and has no choice but to ask her to get back inside. Sarah tries to move carefully, but she almost loses her grip and grabs the top of the plane's bar just in time. With a quick jump, she slides into the plane feeling relieved but also having a small panic attack. Then Jackson confesses that while they were doing the alcohol thing, he may have seen an island. Going back is risky because they may consume the remaining fuel on a mistake, but Sarah decides to trust Jackson's word. She turns the plane around and they begin looking for the island Jackson saw as the fuel gauge continues to drop. Unfortunately they find nothing, and the tank finally gets empty, causing the plane to shut down. It will be glide for a while, but it won't be for long. Thinking this is the end, Sarah and Jackson apologize to each other for being selfish and not listening to each other's needs with more attention. Sarah also confesses she hates goodbyes because they make her want to stay. At that moment, Jackson spots the island he saw earlier, but now they need to figure out how to land the plane. Sarah barely knows the basics, so Jackson tries to support her in the process, but the plane still begins falling at a great speed and hits the water rather turbulently. The plane suddenly flips over, leaving the couple unconscious. The plane slowly starts sinking and eventually lands on the edge of an underwater cliff on the ocean floor. As the plane begins to fill with water, Sarah regains consciousness and desperately tries to get Jackson to wake up, to no avail. Soon the whole cockpit is flooded and Sarah struggles with the door for several seconds until she finally gets it open, immediately swimming out to reach the surface. Once she's got air back in her lungs, she begins calling for Jackson, but he never resurfaces. Refusing to give up on him, Sarah swims back down and discovers the plane is about to fall off the edge. Fortunately Jackson's body has floated up and is now caught in the wing, so Sarah quickly grabs a life jacket, puts it over him, and inflates it just before the plane falls. As the plane disappears into the abyss, Sarah swims up and takes Jackson to the island, where she performs CPR until Jackson regains consciousness. Sarah laughs with happiness, then both of them pass out from exhaustion on the sand. A few hours later, they wake up when they feel the water coming too close. Jackson realizes that they're actually on a sandbar and that it will disappear with the tide. Sarah can't believe this and cries over the fact they are never safe. Once the tide comes over, the couple is left floating around in the water, and their limbs are becoming incredibly tired of keeping their bodies up and swimming against the current. Sarah begins crying as she realizes all their efforts were for nothing because they are going to die here anyway, and Jackson takes the chance to tell her he loves her. She returns the words and the two of them kiss, waiting for the worst to happen. At that moment, a rescue boat finally shows up to pick them up. There are a few shadows underwater that make Sarah nervous, but luckily they manage to swim over and get on the boat, finally reaching safety. 
Not believing they are alive, the couple agrees there won't be any more goodbyes between them. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.